Good, still have your feet nice and parallel. And ideally, just through that change of, you know, having that structure, building muscle mass. Hello, 大家好，我是妹，欢迎来到我的 YouTube channel。如果你是居住在美国、很爱健身的人，你一定会知道数一数二全美最高档的连锁健身房 Equinox。那在全美呢，它有一百多间，光是在纽约就有三十五间。恰好我两周前加入了位在 Lower Manhattan 的 Equinox 会员。那我这个地段算是比较优惠的，用 NYU 学生的折扣下来呢是两百七十块美金一个月，我知道还是算是蛮高的开销。那我觉得投资在身体健康上面是值得的。那今天的影片呢非常难得呢，呃，我要来开箱 Equinox 的健身房之外呢，我还特别找了一名很专业的帅哥教练来示范 Equinox 的一对一的动作指导。那我们就继续。看下去吧。那我很喜欢 Equinox， 就是它的采光很棒。然后，当然器材的种类也是很多元又齐全。然后，我觉得它的镜子很多。It's such a great pleasure to have Na Yang featuring this video. Could you take a moment to introduce yourself yeah, a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I grew up in a marathon running background, marathon running family. So I've always been introduced to fitness at a young age. Um, I kind of got into fitness through track and field. Mm. I was a sprinter, and from there I got into strength training, just oh, training for the gym. Okay. Yeah, and just training to get a little bit of strength, get a little mm -hmm. stronger. And I fell in love with that, so I ended up powerlifting. Yeah. So I was working on bench, squat, and deadlift, uh -huh. where I had the New York State records. Wow. Um, so really enjoyed doing that. From mm. there, I got interning as a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, I was working at a strength and conditioning coach, and then I started studying nutrition at yeah. NYU. Wow, then, that's fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Previously, I had a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Na Yang. I tried to hit the gym like four times a week. Yeah. So Nayan was like suggesting me to do like a push pull day yes. Yes. workout, and so today we're going to do that. Exactly. Okay. Today we'll do one of those days. Okay, I'm very mm -hmm. excited. Yeah. Okay, great. So today we're gonna start with a full body pull day. We're doing a little bit of everything um, pull related today. So we'll be doing upper body and lower body. We're gonna start by warming up on the rower. So we'll be just doing three minutes just to warm up our body. And you know this training session today will be completely tailored towards May's goals of ideally toning up a little bit or increasing strength, working on uh, gaining strength overall. We're just gonna do three minutes to start on the rower. So we're starting with a little bit of a warm up, a little bit of a stretch just to get your body ready. And then we're gonna get started on first focusing on some of the compound movements. So working on a little bit of bigger movements, right? These are gonna be tailored more towards strength, really hitting all the muscle groups that are involved. And we're gonna do a little bit of supersetting upper body and lower body together. This way to warm up the full body. Oh, not for these two minutes. You're allowed to slow down. You can slow down a little bit. We're gonna work on warming up our hips and our hamstrings a little bit, just getting the full body moving. So we're gonna start with the world's greatest stretch, but it'll be a little bit changed. We're gonna be walking out here Taking a nice big lunge, twist onto that side. Good, now we're gonna twist back, bring that leg back, go into our other leg. You wanna bring your foot as high up and as wide out as you can while dropping your hips nice and low. Twist onto that side. Then you're gonna bring your feet back. We're gonna go into downward dog from here. So you're gonna walk your hands back, drop your hips and your heels down to the ground feel it stretch your hamstrings, and then walk back out. And we're gonna do that same thing again. Good. Um, so you know, I've been training for many years already, but I never really try a push-pull split workout. And can you explain the advantage of the push-pull split workout? Yeah. Yeah, and what's the mechanism like behind this? So I like to split up push and pull because it's, you know, your whole body is made up of push and pull movements. So what we're doing is kind of focusing on some of the strengths of a pull day yeah. while also 
doing a full body workout, mm. and that way we're just going to get the same amount of volume. Yeah. Um, if we split it up, if you're training an even amount of days, right, we split it up between push and pull, mm-hmm. you're going to get similar amounts of volume for yeah. both those different areas. So today we are doing a pull day, and yeah. pull usually consists of what kind of workouts? That would be a lot of things that are going to involve the glutes, the hamstrings, your back, biceps. Uh-huh. So today, for upper body, a lot of the movements are going to be things like rows, curls, mm-hmm. um, pull-ups, things like that. Yeah. The lower body movements are going to be variations of deadlifts uh-huh. um, or some hip hinges, uh-huh. things like that. So we're going to do Romanian deadlifts, regular deadlifts, sumo as well, things like that. Which means that we're starting from deadlifts. So we're going to start with a conventional deadlift. We're going to do uh, eight reps on this for two sets, and we're going to do 12 reps with the TRX rows. Yes, supersetting them. So, for the conventional deadlift, we're having your legs are gonna be right under your hips, uh, right at the bar. So the bar's gonna be pretty much right up against your legs. You're gonna start to push your hips back, right? Keeping your back nice and flat. I like to go as far as you can while feeling it stretch your hamstrings. Right from here, I'm gonna start to lower until I grab the bar, right? I wanna keep my back nice and straight here. My hips are a little bit lower than my chest. My weight is in my heels, right? So my toes are kind of up off the ground. This way, I can keep my back nice and flat, and I'm gonna squeeze my glutes through as I come up. When I come back down, I want my weight in my heels, slowly lowering it to the ground. We're doing just standard TRX rows. You're gonna walk your feet out so that you're at about 45 degrees, right? I'm keeping my body in a nice straight line. I'm flexing my abs, squeezing my glutes. I'm going to pull alongside my body, keeping the tension on TRX. I don't want to pull up too high so I get any slack like that. So I'm just staying nice and straight, just like this, for 12 reps. Back flat? Yep, bring your weight back. Bring my weight back, okay, just like sitting down. More good activation on the top. Eight reps. No rest in between. Right, we're starting with a wider stance. You still want your feet nice and parallel. So you kind of want to go as wide as you can feel comfortably still having your feet nice and parallel. I like to say just a little bit outside your shoulder width apart. The bars, again, right up against your legs. So from here, I'm having less of a bend in my back, but I'm still gonna bend a bit. So I'm gonna start to hinge back. So pushing my hips back, right, as far as I can. For me, that feels like here. Then from this position, I'm gonna lower myself to the ground to get the bar. So here, my knees are still pointed up, and then I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, push my hips through at the top. So sumo targets more of your glutes and a little bit less of your lower back. Because of just the mechanics, right? When I'm here, I have much more of a range of motion in my lower back, versus if my feet are wider, it's more using my hips to hinge. So I'm gonna engage more glutes when I'm doing sumo. Yeah. How about the inner legs? And the inner legs as well. You'll feel that definitely more with sumo as well. But a lot of it also depends on everybody's own biomechanics, what feels most comfortable for them. So wider stance, try and make sure your back is nice and flat, keep your chest up. Yeah, I would try and flatten your back a little bit more. So if you want, you can bring your feet in a little bit closer, just a tiny bit. Good, still have your feet nice and parallel. So keep your feet together a little more, good. Good, drive your hips through a little more at the top. Try and straighten up with your upper back. I just overheard 
yeah. 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 So my max deadlift is 455 pounds. So about 205 kilos. Yeah. For one rep. For one rep. But yeah. So do you train deadlift a lot? Yes. Deadlifting is like was my favorite. It's always been one of my favorite lifts. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we are going to do stability ball hamstring curls. So you're going to be lying on the mat with your heels on the stability ball. Here I have my arms on the ground. I'm going to squeeze my glutes, flex my abs so I'm off the ground in a straight line. Right? My arms can help with the stability a little bit. What I'm going to do is I want to feel my weight in my heels and I'm going to pull my heels up to my glutes and then go back down. Right, so the whole time I'm squeezing my glutes, that way I'm really feeling the curl with my hamstrings. I feel like you're doing so after muscle. You're doing fives, you are using the core muscles to come through. Yeah, so in general, the more stability and control you have over your glutes, your core, the strength in your hamstrings is all gonna be what makes it look nice and smooth. And then we're gonna superset that as well. Superset? Yes, with TRX face pulls. So this time, since this uh, movement is a little bit more difficult, you don't have to be quite as far in. So your feet can be more like here, right? I'm gonna have my palms this time facing down. Instead of facing each other, they're gonna face down. I'm gonna drive my elbows out and back like this. So I'm going to be still staying in a nice straight line, right? If this is a little easy, I can come in but here it's focusing on driving the elbows back and out. So the angle of the elbow plays a critical role. Definitely. So as, as I kind of change the motion that my arms are going in here, as opposed to here, I'm gonna engage different muscles. So this will be more rear delts, upper back, a little bit of your traps as well. And then my, I'm gonna lift my butt up. Oh my God. Okay, squeeze. So while squeezing, I shouldn't let my hips uh, sink down, right? Uh, I should raise it all the time. It Am I doing this correctly? Yeah. Okay. Keep squeezing your glutes, push them through at the top. Ooh, I feel the tension in my hamstring. Good. Keep squeezing your glutes, push your hips through. I should do this more frequently with a yoga ball I had in my home. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell me if this is correct. Although this exercise primarily targets real doubt, but I feel like I'm engaging a lot of my core muscles and also part of my glutes. So all gonna revolve around having core stability, keeping your body in line. So you're always gonna be working your core. Um, the good thing about this stability ball hamstring curl is even though you're using body weight, there are ways of always making it more challenging, more difficult. If it feels too easy, go from double leg into single leg. So, for here, instead of having both of my legs up, I'm gonna set up in the same exact way, and I'm just gonna keep one of my legs up. And then here, I'm just curling with one leg. So all my body weight, how I was doing with two legs before, I now have to do it with just one leg. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a challenge. So what you're basically doing is like this. Exercise I've ever tried in my life. Don't fold over, I've ever tried in my life. Don't fold over, I've ever tried in my life. Don't fold over, I've ever tried in my life. Don't fold over, I've ever tried in my life. Don't fold over, I've ever tried in my life.
Some of my lux 350s and when I pop I stick to the block No time for the ducks No time for the box She gon' scared or not Ay, a white I'm a speechless <laughs> On my top Play J. Rolly watch Supreme on my lux 350s when I walk Now this baby dip Alright so we're gonna do two sets of three exercises as a finisher, right, to get the heart rate up a little bit and to get a little more tired, but still getting in a lot of volume. So we're gonna start with assisted pull-ups. There's not much assistance on these, but we're gonna do nice full range of motion pull-ups, driving your elbows down, really focusing on feeling it in your back for 10 reps. After those 10 reps, we're gonna do 10 RDLs with the 25 pounds. So here we're focusing on our hips, going back as far as possible, feeling it really stretch our hamstrings, keeping our back nice and flat, and squeezing our glutes up at the top. So again, my weight is in my heels, push my hips back all the way, squeeze my glutes at the top. Then after 10 of those, we're gonna do 10 bicep curls. So my arms are starting down here. As I curl, I start to rotate my arms have my pinkies facing me, just so I get a bigger contraction on that curl. So then 10 reps like this. Right? No rest in between. No rest in between. Okay, I finally have some time to yeah. take a rest. Yeah. How are you feeling? How do you feel after that workout? How does it feel it compares to like ones you usually do? Uh -huh. um, I think it's pretty fun and challenging because you are mixing up different things. Just make it more high intensity so I feel more volume. And, but I also see like the mechanics behind the workouts that you design for me. Especially for the body weight part that you are using TRX and the yoga balls. Right. Yeah, because when I'm training by myself, I normally like just go over the compound movements like using barbell, dumbbells, the machines. But sometimes I kind of like forget how to engage my total body more. Right. So I think that's a great exercise. Not only train the big muscle group, but also the stabilizer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, that's that's like part of my training philosophy. It's all about, you know, you want to be in the total package. Uh -huh. Right? A little bit of cardio, a little high intensity, some strength. Yeah. Feeling all the muscles, stabilization, all of it. Uh huh. So I'm intrigued by the part that you studied nutrition before, mm -hmm. and you know, like now I have a very greedy goal of <laughs> <laughs> wanting to build my strength, but at the same time, like wanting to lose some body fat. Do you think that's achievable, and how can I achieve that? Definitely, uh -huh. that's definitely achievable. It is hard to, especially with nutrition being such a large part of training, yeah. it's a hard way to kind of achieve both. Yeah. There's definitely the, um, when it comes to training intensity, training styles, training programs, when we're building strength, that's more what comes in the gym. Right? Yeah. Having structured workouts, having structured increases in uh -huh. developing that strength, uh -huh. you can definitely do that while maintaining um, your calories yeah. around the same. And ideally, just through that change of you know having that structure, building muscle mass, but not being in either a caloric surplus mm -hmm. or a caloric deficit, will start to change your body composition mm -hmm. to where you can really gain that strength, but maybe still you know build a little fat, lose a little muscle. It's just really slow progress. Mm -hmm. Just because you're not doing one of the extremes yeah. of like gaining yeah. or just losing, and you're trying to do both, yeah. it takes a little more time. Yeah. So it's like a very slow process, but it's definitely doable. So I can see that the consistency plays a big role in exactly. this part. So I'm I'm actually like not very rigid about my diet right now, but mm -hmm. now I try to prioritize protein like a lot more than usual. And sometimes I limit my carbs intake. And I, how do you think about carb? Like, do you like have carbohydrates a lot, or you yeah. try to limit that? I I kind of my philosophy is like 
consistency over time. Mm -hmm. Balance is the most important thing, mm -hmm. right? You're, if you're really extreme and limiting, that might cause you to either have issues with your energy levels, yeah. maybe you start hating the goals, you mm -hmm. start hating that, you might decide you don't want to stick mm -hmm. with it, right? It, a balance is more important. So mm -hmm. you don't have to like strictly limit yourself yeah. if that's what keeps you consistent. Mm -hmm. If you like having a little bit of carbs, you like having tasty food, if that's more likely to have you stay consistent, mm -hmm. then that's more important. Mm -hmm. So it, it is good. I don't strictly limit anything. Yeah, I totally agree that because if you limit your diet too much and that deprives your energy, your motivation of going to the gym, then that's like offsetting the efforts that you put right. in. Intuitive eating. Mm, right? You yeah. eat how you feel you need to eat in order to stay consistent, reach your goals, that kind of thing. Like, What is the best part of becoming a trainer for you? Is this a fulfilling job? Yes, it's an extremely fulfilling job for me. Um, I've always loved working with people, mm -hmm. meeting new people, meeting new personalities, you know, making friends. And then I've always been a very like science kind of oriented person, but like an active person. So I kind of love the blend of, you know, I'm doing something that I love. I'm helping share my knowledge, learning more all the time, mm -hmm. working with other people. I see them reaching their goals, you know, being happy, uh, trying to achieve their goals, and really seeing accomplishments in them. Mm -hmm. And that's the most fulfilling part about the job, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love to see you again in my channel. Absolutely, okay. love to. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 那最后来回应一下，我觉得两百七十块美金的 Equinox 会员值得吗？作为创作者，其实我有一个蛮大的考量，就是因为不知道大家有没有发现，过去一年我还蛮少分享健身房相关的知识，原因是因为我大多是在学校的健身房运动。以学校的规定来说呢，其实是蛮严禁相机跟手机的录影，对，所以我也几乎不敢。把我的相机拿出来，因为环境的限制导致我没有办法做很好的创作内容，其实蛮是蛮可惜的。因为我也希望我的频道可以持续的更新，可以给大家更优质的内容。所以呢，加入 Equinox 有一部分的考量也是因为这个。那当然，这一次的拍摄也是有先跟他们公司的内部人员、跟他们的 manager 有进行沟通过，然后选在一个人比较少的时段。那回归到刚刚的问题，我觉得 Equinox 呢，它不仅是使用蛮好的器材，然后提供很明亮的环境，它也包含了很丰富的团体课程。不然在外面，如果你要去上飞轮啊、高强度间歇课程，一堂也是要加三十几块美金。那 Equinox 它的课程有包含瑜伽、飞轮、皮拉提斯。然后也有各种高强度的健身内容，所以如果你能够把握这个会员的资源，几乎每一天去健身房打卡的话，我觉得算是一个蛮不错的投资。好，那今天的影片就到这边啦，希望你们喜欢这次的分享，下次再见，拜拜。